like to see. <laughs> no, and I liked uh, that uh, also true when she said when this uh, party leaders, right. they, they tried to find a, a quotation for their grave, no? Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and she has a like wonderful yeah. two women, and, yeah. and she says then that the, the, the only, the last man of the... <laughs> the last man of the soldier. <laughs> of the soldier. <laughs> and, and then I saw you shot back to Babel, and Babel looked to group. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's sure. Very, very, they, oh. They, <laughs> how they how awesome. dare you, how dare you? Yeah. Now, okay, but we, I have the right always to do this, but Questions for the all, uh, audience, please. You are not excluded. You can still ask, ask a few questions. Barbara, for example, nicht? Yeah, okay, please. Yeah. As, as you had already written the script and then directed the script, do you find that there's a point where you take one hat off and put on the other, or are you constantly juggling? Like, do you kind of see the story from a different angle once you're directing? Does that make sense, the question? I didn't understand um, what you mean. As, as you were the writer and the director, yes. is there ever a point where you say, okay, I'm now the director, and you look at the story from a different angle, or are you constantly going back and forth between the two things? But I, I have the script, so I have to, 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 to deal with the script, but uh, sometimes I let out some, some, uh, some scenes because I thought it's not any more so important, or I... Uh, for instance, Barbara Sukova, she she uh, she read everything I read before, and uh, and and she, for instance, brought up a, a speech against the war. I had another speech in, uh, and and then she came up and said, 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 "Look, here is a speech which I think it's still better than yours," and she was right. So I, I changed it and put her 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 speech in because she wrote a lot of speeches against war. And I concentrated a little bit on this because uh, when I did the film in 80, uh, 85, we had a very big peace movement also in Germany against, you know, the rearmament on, on west side and east side. So uh, uh, there was really the first very big peace movement, movement in, in Germany. And so I, 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 I put that out a little bit more. She also had fights against the unions, so she was very much again, but that was not so interesting for us in this moment. So I, I chose, uh, I had to choose, you know, uh, and so I concentrated on, 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 on themes or subjects which were important for the moment also in Germany. Yeah, right. Because um, I would say this was also a form of an essay in, yes. in some way. Also some of the forms you are uh, so fond of and good in. You know. <laughs> so, okay. I was thinking how Rosa Luxemburg was an icon for the women's movement in the 70s. Mm -hmm. well, we didn't know anything about her, but we saw her, she was a revolutionary. So she was only a figurehead, sort of like Frida Kahlo as the artist, Rosa Luxemburg as the political revolutionary, and you brought her to life by using her words in this piece, which is so full of speech, that one would think, oh no, not another speech. Yeah, but I thought so, that, this, this, that this your, night I thought, oh my god, how many speeches. That's I your struggle like, with the yeah. film, and, and it, it's amazing, because it's the second time I've seen it, but the other was way back in 86, probably. Or, 80s, that you were able to keep us engrossed in the story through your editing and your scripting. But you and I both felt at the beginning, and I felt it also with the great Luxembourg speech, well, I don't know how to explain it, but the music was overwhelming. And like at the very beginning of the prison, it was so dour and so long and so strong. Even silence, you know, where we can make our own sound. So I had this difficulty with the film, that the sound was making us think in a certain way, and not the words alone could have done that. Oh, you think that the main speech, when she speaks, uh, speaks about Wallenstein, where and there the, the music... It uh, very slowly comes in mm -hmm. and builds. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was strange, nicht? because you would not say, you would say, you would allow her to have this strong uh, speech, but on the other hand, because it was so strange, 
it was also interesting, you know, to say, nicht, whatever speech there would be, we know what is the intention of it. Yeah. So we don't really need every word of it. So it is good that there is another element, like music, mm. coming in, which is, as you say, in most of the film, as she said herself, uh, to Liebrecht, go and play something for me. I was so long without. No, they were music. very, very much tensed with music. But I, I, that was this, the, the scene where we were. I, I was uh, thinking a lot if I may put music on or not. Uh, just to, because on the other speeches I had no music. It was no. just on this speech. And this is like a testament. You know, it's, it's bigger than, than life, this speech. So I had to, to, to build it up. For, it's like, that is for history, yeah, and therefore she uses Wallenstein and you know, there she enters into history and everything she says, it, it, it's, it, it's, it, it remains a dream, it remains a to total uh, illusion, but because they never did that, they never came to the end, to, to this uh, zeal, zeal and zeal. Oh, to, to get the humanity with all these values of Greek and German uh, classics and all these values she is looking for. Yeah. That is. But Wallenstein again is something actually only edu uh, somebody educated in Germany can really appreciate mm. what power is. Schiller, uh, yeah. Schiller in this. Drama had for, Goethe, for know. our like Goethe's Faust and uh, Wallenstein from Schiller. They are the two. So they, she reaches to the stars, right? Yeah. You yes. know, like in Wallenstein. So it's 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 the biggest speech if you want that you know. And she and did it. It's it's not her. It's just it was not it will come never, invented. It comes it's never not real. Ich meine, it was not invented. So that was actually. Happening, she was in this speech. It was a real yeah, speech yeah, of her. Yeah, it was she a real was speech. I never uh, invented right, right. a word in her speech. Because it would be something that you would say typical for a director to bring it in for small no, no, spice no, no, or no. another. Mm -hmm. She was very cultural minded. All these people and how they lived for us to see their their apartments. They are very, very, very bourgeois. They yeah. were social democratic and, and also, but they lived in a way today you couldn't understand that. No, no, but yeah, that was also, it was the bourgeoisie who came uh, as leaders to the yeah. workers yeah. in that. But Marx once uh, noticed that the, there's only one good argument for slavery. The argument that philosophers in old Greek could exist. Because without slavery they had to work and could not think. Yeah, and he never worked. <laughs> he was paid by Engels. Uh, Engels, you know, that's, uh, but, but he did not mind, you know, that, that's the point, you know. <laughs> Lots of people get money from others, you have not to mind that. That is it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we had a... Some more? Yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. Hi, um, we've seen Barbara Sokol in a couple of your other films and some other uh, famous prison scenes as well. I was wondering what your experience was working with her on this project and if there is something particular that she holds as an actor that you admire and uh, did you have her in mind while you were writing this piece? Um, I did My first film I did with her was Marian and Julian and there she played the so-called terrorist, no? Gudrun Anslin, and she was so nasty during the shootings. She was so rebellious, she was so, oh, I hated her in, in some ways. and we all hated her. And uh, I, uh, she was very great in the films. She was good, but she was also in the in the breaks and in the She was always like this, and uh, I thought never again. And then I saw, when I did this film, I searched in Poland and everywhere, and because I, I looked out for for a, for a woman who's more like Rosario Simon. She's not very much from her from her face and from her outlook. She's not. Uh, so so near to, to Rosa, then you can forget it when you see her. Uh, there is no film about Rosa Luxemburg. That was my fortune. Only.